morning, kids. Welcome back to our children worship. So I bet you guys know what we are going to do today. Yup, we are going to do another challenge together. Today is the What's in the Box challenge. What do you think this challenge is all about? Is it like trying to figure out what's inside a box? That's right. You know, when you put your hands inside a box and not knowing what you'll pull out of it, that's kind of like living your life for God, not knowing what will happen to you. So, we are going to play the What's in the Box Challenge to see what that is like. We are going to guess what's inside a box, but we won't be able to see what is inside. We'll have to stick our hands inside the box and try to figure out what we are touching and see if we can guess the item correctly. So how about we invite a couple of our friends to play this challenge together? Yeah, good idea! Awesome! Let's get started! For the What's in the Box challenge, we have invited two players to tackle this challenge. Each player will play three rounds. For each round, the player will be shown a picture of three items, but only one of them will be inside the box. So the player will use their hands to reach inside the box and try to figure out which item it is. For each item they guess correctly, they will earn a point and be rewarded at the very end. Now let's introduce our first player. He is one of our Cantonese pastor, Pastor Jimmy. And he can't wait to find out what's in the box. Now let's start our first round. And here are the three items. We have got a Lego Captain Carter, a Lego Captain America, and a Lego Winter Soldier. Remember, only one of them will be inside the box. Let's see if Pastor Jimmy got what it takes. Three, two, one, go! All right, here we go. Let's see. Okay, let's see. I, I feel that little round plate thingy. Okay, I'm gonna guess. Is it Winter Soldier? Yes! Yes! Alright! Pastor Jimmy takes the first round, but can he nail the second round? Here are the next three items. These are Funko Pops Pillsbury Doughboy figures. We have the Valentine. Pillsbury Doughboy, the original Pillsbury Doughboy, and the Christmas Pillsbury Doughboy. Three, two, one, go! Right, round two. Let's make it two for two. Oh, it's actually pretty big. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'll move on. Oh, something came off. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I'm gonna go with the original Doughboy. Am I correct? Nope, it's the ah, Christmas Doughboy. Oh man! Oh no! Pastor Jimmy fumbles on the second round. But can he redeem himself by taking home the final round? And here are the final items. These are animal squishies. We have a squirrel squishy, a pig squishy and a bear squishy. Good luck, Pastor Jimmy. All right, last one. Let's see. Let's see what happens this time. Here we go. Oh, it's very small. <laughs> I think this one is a squirrel. Yes. Yes. You, are, right. you got two out of three. Good job. All right, high five. Great job, Pastor Jimmy. You have won two rounds, so you will receive two points. And now it's reward time. And your prize candy is inside this small box. But you have to open it fast to grab them. Like in two seconds. Two seconds? Yeah. Okay. All right, do it. Here we go. Whoa! Good job, Pastor Jimmy. Now let's introduce our second player. He's our English congregation lead pastor, Pastor Keith. And he certainly looks ready to find out 
what's in the box? Now let's start our first round. And here are the three items. Oh, okay, so, so, oh, there's definitely, I killed the shield <laughs> and it's right there. So, oh, this, this, I feel something on the chin. I'm gonna say Winter Soldier, final answer. It's Captain America. Captain America. Oh. <laughs> it was not the good start that Pastor Keith was hoping for, but he's not giving up. Now, the second round. And here are the next three items. Here we go. Oh, it's even bigger. I didn't know that. And I feel the head. I don't feel anything else. Oh, that's because it's upside down. This has got to be, I have no idea. This is the generic one. It's a Valentine's one. Valentine's! <laughs> oh, I am not good at this. Oh, I see how this works now. Okay. Oh no. That was a tough second round. With the final round, can Pastor Keith take home that final point? Let's find out. And here are the final items. These are Funko Pop at icon figures. First, we have the Pez Candy Monkey, Tony the Tiger, and the Icy Bear. Alright, now I gotta get this one right. You kids would definitely be way better at this than I would. Okay, here's the feet, here's the head. I feel this one, I feel the spoon. I think I'm gonna get this one right. The spoon I memorized is Tony the Tiger. Yes, you got it right. Good job. You are one point. I got one. I got it. All right. In the final round, Pastor Keith was not going to go home empty-handed. Great job, Pastor Keith. You receive one point. And now it's your reward time. And your prize candy is inside this small box but you have to open it fast to grab them. I think I can do this. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna get this candy. Ready? And go. <laughs> Great job playing our challenge, Pastor Jimmy and Pastor Keith. I hope we didn't scare you too much at the end, but you guys did an awesome job. So John John, was that an easy or was it a difficult challenge? Hmm, it seems difficult because you cannot see what's inside the box and you don't know what you're touching. Yeah, and that's the challenge that we will be learning together today. When we put our hands inside a box and not sure what we will pull out of it, it's sort of like following Jesus. We don't know what will happen to us. Sometimes following Jesus, the price is quite steep. We might face hardship or face different obstacles, but know this boys and girls, that when we follow Jesus, He's with us every step of the way, and we do not need to be afraid. So John John, are you ready to tackle this challenge? Yeah, challenge accepted. Now let's get started. Let's Today, we're going to talk about a Bible character named Paul. Now, we have talked about Paul in the past, but in today's Bible story, we learned that Paul was facing a difficult challenge, as difficult as the what's in the box challenge. We are going to be learning about the story of Paul saying goodbye to his brothers in Ephesus to go on a difficult journey to Jerusalem, where he can face prison or even death. Paul shows us that following Jesus is not always going to be an easy job. When we give our lives to Jesus, they're His, and He will guide us to places and to people who need Him. Hmm, let's think of some examples together. Like when Jesus wants us to sacrifice our time 
to serve Him. Or when we're sent on mission trips to help people in faraway places to know Jesus. And instead of just buying the things we enjoy, we can also use our money to support God's work. Those are some great examples. Sometimes we'll even face greater challenges just like Paul. But let's remember, when we have accepted Jesus into our lives, He'll never leave or forsake us. And we'll learn more about that in today's sermon time. Now before we sing praise to God, let us have Daniel to do the opening prayer for us. Take it away, Daniel. Dear Jesus, thank you for our church to open um, last week so everyone can face to face. And so, so, sister, wear, always wear masks, even though it's hard at church. And thank you for Teacher Dixon to still do online worship because some people doesn't want to go to church yet. So um, hope Teacher Dixon get enough sleep and strength to make those videos and go to church. Um, hope, um, help us prepare our hearts on Sunday to worship. Um, help uh, um, the school get more masks in case people doesn't wear masks and forgot them. Help them. Um, don't forget to wear masks. They always um, have to wear masks at indoor, even though sometimes it's hard. And um, help the COVID-19 get vaccines so the COVID more people can get flu shot and get a lot of shots and other stuff so people will get better and around the world and you know, um, scientists find the COVID-19 cause it. In your most name, amen. Good morning, CBMC kids. How are you doing? Welcome back to our Sunday worship. Today, I want to share a verse with you from Proverbs 17:17. 17, 17. A friend loves at all times, and a brother is born at a time of adversity. Let's all stand up and we'll sing the two songs for our God.
perfect love Have you heard of the one in heaven? Have you heard how he gave his son? Cause I have found this love I believe in the sun Show me Hi kids, I want to welcome you all back to another week of children's worship. Over the past four weeks, we have been doing various challenges to learn about God's truth. And God wants us to use these truths to help us when we face our real challenges. Today, we did the What's in a Box Challenge. For those of you watching at home, you got to see the nervous players in a situation where they needed to reach inside a box not knowing what they will be touching. Some were really frightened by that insect. And for those of you who were in our Sunday worship at church, you kids probably played the same challenges and some of you won some awesome treats. So, what was it like to have to reach your hand in the box when you weren't sure what you were going to be touching? Was it scary? Was it nerve-wracking? It can make us anxious when we don't know what's ahead for us. This is true in our lives as Christians as well. We don't know where God will lead us, and that can sometimes be a scary thought. But God is always with us, and when we obey God, we are rewarded for our obedience. Let's open our Bibles and read about Paul, who was about to leave on a journey that he knew could be dangerous. But because he trusted God and his plan, he knew that he would be taken care of and eventually spend eternity in heaven with his Creator. Let's open up our Bibles to the book of Acts, chapter 20, and we'll start with verse 13. Paul went to many different places on his mission trip, so that many would know about the good news of Jesus and receive him as their Savior. For his final destination, he wanted 
to go to Jerusalem. So Paul and his traveling companions arrived in a place called Miletus. Paul didn't have a lot of time left to go to Jerusalem in time to celebrate the day of Pentecost. He knew if he went to Ephesus, he would want to visit the families and that would keep him from being able to make it to Jerusalem in time. He sent a message to the elders, leaders over the church in Ephesus to meet him in Miletus. When they arrived, Paul shared a message with them. The things he shares with them are reminders to them of his trustworthy life that he lived before them. How he served the Lord with humility, even when he was challenged by the Jews, and how he helped other believers grow in their faith and sharing the good news about Jesus to everyone. Paul told the Ephesian elders that the Holy Spirit was leading him back to Jerusalem and he was going even though he didn't know what's going to happen to him there. He only knew that in every city, the Holy Spirit warned him that he would face prison and hardships. Paul told them that they would never see his face again. Since Paul knew that he would not see these believers again, he gave them instructions to take care of the followers of Christ that these elders would be responsible for. Paul said that teachers would come to Ephesus and try to lead people away from God's truth. Paul's final words were about how he set an example to work hard to earn money and to help the weak because Jesus said it is more blessed to give than to receive. It was time to say farewell to these believers from Ephesus. They all knelt down to pray. After praying, the Ephesian elders hugged Paul and wept as they said goodbye. Their hearts were saddened because Paul said they would never see his face again. They loved this man who faithfully served them and earned their trust by the way he lived. So, how do you think Paul is feeling right now as he is talking to his friends? He's probably feeling overwhelmed with emotions because he is very sad to leave them. He is probably feeling nervous and scared because the Holy Spirit has warned him that prison and hardships await him in Jerusalem. Just like today with our challenge, Paul didn't know what he was getting into. He doesn't know what will happen to him when he moves forward. But God knows and Paul trusts that God's plan is greater than his fears. He knows that his mission is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. When we ask Jesus to be the Lord of our lives and become followers of Christ, we also take on a mission like Paul's. Who knows what Paul is talking about when he says the good news? He is talking about Christ's sacrifice for us. The good news is that Jesus died on the cross and sacrificed his life so that we don't have to pay for our sins. If we believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins, and rose again three days later, then we can have the gift of salvation. We can be forgiven for the things we do wrong and still get to heaven. Jesus did that for us. People like Paul had witnessed what Jesus did firsthand and they were excited to tell others about it. But they were still people who didn't want to hear the good news. They were stuck in their old ways and weren't ready to hear that God had changed the rules. These people were sometimes not very nice to Paul and his friends and they made it difficult for them to tell others about Jesus. But did Paul and his friends give up? No! Even when they faced prison and hardships, they continued to do God's work and spread the good news so that everyone had the chance to be saved and go to heaven. That was pretty brave of Paul, wasn't it? 
Well, you know what? Even though Paul was a pretty great guy, he wasn't extraordinary. He was just a regular guy who just decided to follow God's plan. He was just like one of us. And we can do the same thing that Paul did. We can follow God's plan even when it's a little scary because we know that God is with us and is helping us all along the way. So your challenge for this week is to serve God and take opportunity to tell others about the good news. Don't worry about what will happen next. Trust that God will be with you all along the way and will help you to complete his mission. Let's all close our eyes and bow our heads and finish with a word of prayer. Father God, I just want to thank you for being God who just takes care of us. And I just pray that um, for this week's mission of being able to share the good news with our friends and neighbors, that your Holy Spirit will just fill our hearts and help us be brave to serve you, um, even if we don't know what's going to happen in the future. Help us um, just simply be obedient and to follow you and to continue to um, you know, love our friends and neighbors the way you want us to. I pray all these things in your son's precious name. Amen. All right, kids. Thanks for paying attention, and we will see you next time. Bye. Awesome sermon, Teacher Ricky. So kids, let's do our best to tackle this week's challenge together, to serve God and to share the good news about Jesus to others no matter what. And now it's our memory verse time. Today, we have Carice to read us our two memory verses. Take it away, Carice. Hi everyone, it's Carice, and today I will be reading your memory verses for today. Memory verse one, and now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. Acts 20:22. 20, memory verse two, God will strengthen you with his own great power so that you will not give up when trouble comes, but you will be patient. Colossians 1, 11. Let's do our best to memorize God's word in our heart. And now it's time for our What's Up segment. mystery question time. Are you ready? And here are the questions. Number one, fill in the blanks. The challenge we did in the video was called the what are these four words challenge. Number two, our challenge from this week's sermon is to what is this word God and take opportunity to tell others about the what are these two words. Number three, multiple choice. Choose the best answer. Which Bible character do we learn about in today's sermon? A, Paul, B, Peter, C, Bartimaeus, or D, John? Number four, multiple choice. Choose the best answer. To share the good news is to tell others about A. Why we go to church B. Paul's mission in Jerusalem C. Jesus Christ's sacrifice for us Or D. None of the above Bonus questions! Please provide a short answer for these questions. Number 5 in our What's Up segment number two, we talked about a sea otter who created a game challenge of its own. What is the name of the game? Number six, write out the name of the two songs we sang in the worship today. Each mystery question is worth five points each. Once you have all of them written down, then you'll email them to the following email address cbmckids at cbmcla.org. We will keep track of your points and we will provide you with opportunities to trade in your points for rewards and we will keep you posted. And that's it for today's What's Up segment.
What's up segment number two? What's up segment number two? Cute sea otter invents a challenging game. At the California's Monterey Bay Aquarium, a cute sea otter named Kit uses a piece of shrimp as a game piece to play a game she created. The aquarium workers call it the shrimp game. So instead of eating her food, which was a piece of shrimp, the clever sea otter kit would hide the shrimp by popping it out of a hole on an enrichment board. Then she'll come popping out of the water to find it. Kit created this game all by herself and seems to enjoy playing it a lot. Here, let's check out this video. But just like any other challenging game, your friend would always want to get in on the fun too. Let's see what happens when Kit's otter friend named Ivy drops by. Well, I guess Ivy didn't want to play. She just wanted to eat the shrimp. Kit is one of the aquarium's largest otters. This talented mammal spends most of her time taking care of other young pups. But we hope to see her inventing more new challenges soon. And that's it for today's What's Up segment. And now is our craft time. Hey, I heard this craft was really fun. So let's follow along. How are you guys doing? Welcome to Craft Time with Miss Craft. Well, 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 last week we had fun making crafts, right? Before we start today's fun craft, let's check out pictures. Um, I'm so glad that you sent pictures to me. I'm so glad that you want to show others what you made. And I would like to encourage you, if you want to show me your craft or show everybody else, please email to the email address below. I would love to show them in the upcoming videos. And today, we talked about life is like a, um, putting your hands into the box and you never know what you're going to get. And you don't know the future. And that's why we have to trust Jesus. So today's craft, guess what we're making? We are making a box. Oh, isn't that fun, boys and girls? This box has a lid as well. It could close down. It, it could close it up. And you could put your secrets in there. Your candies. And you can open it up. Wow, isn't that fun? Do you want to try? It takes two pieces um, to fold it together. And when? Well, let's start. Okay, this is the material that you need to have. You need two square papers. One for the bottom, one for the top. So let's start with the bottom. So we're gonna fold this in half, square paper, and open it up. Turn it to the other side and fold it in half again. Okay. And afterwards, we are gonna open it up and fold this bottom layer to the middle fold line. Do it both sides, okay? The bottom to towards the middle fold line. Then we turn it around, do the same thing again, the bottom towards the middle fold line, okay? Do it again once to the other side. So after you're done, you can see, um, lines of squares show up in your paper see they're all squares lining up so you take the top corner and both top corners take this corner fold it down to this focal point this full line where 
where this focal point meets, okay? You do the same thing with this angle. Okay, you fold it down. So you're gonna have something like this. Afterwards, you're gonna follow the fold line to fold this down, okay? Then you're gonna flip it over, okay, flip it over. Take the top two corners, fold it towards this point. See this point here? Yes. We're gonna fold it towards this point for both angles on the top, okay? Be sure you're lining it up nicely. All right. Afterwards, okay, you get a shape like this. Then you take the bottom corner, okay? Fold it into this focal point. See the square? There's a square on the top and the middle point where the square meets. And we're gonna fold the bottom angle towards that middle point for both sides, both bottom angles towards the middle point, okay? All right, there we go. All right, make sure the lines are nicely fold. And now you have something like this. See this? Something, see this two angles left and right? And there's fold line here, right? You push it in, okay? You fold it back out. Okay, you push pushed it in. And then you follow the fold line, fold it back out. Do it one more time, okay? You see this angle here? We open it up and we push it in because we have a fold line here. And then Follow the fold line. You push this side in. See that? Okay. Right. There we go. All right. Now we're gonna take this angle and slip it in to this pocket here. See the pocket here. Yeah. We're gonna take this angle and slip it into the pocket here, gently. There we go. Now we have something like this. Okay. All right. So then we take the bottom, follow the fold line, and then open up. Take the top, follow the fold line. Okay, the fold line here. And gently fold it. Afterwards, we take your finger, one of the finger here. Push it out. Push it out the other side as well. Voila. There. Yeah, and then make sure this line is nicely um, folded nicely so that um, the whole box can stand up. So this is the bottom of the box. And we put it aside. Then we take out another piece of paper, square paper. We do the same thing for the first steps. I'm gonna fold it in half, turn around, and fold it in half to the other way. So you will have a big cross in the paper. Then we take the bottom of the fold line, fold it into the middle fold line, turn it around, we'll do the same with the other side. Okay. Fold it towards the middle fold line, lining it up. Then we turn around, we take the bottom again, put it in the middle fold line. Okay. Do it again with the other side. Okay, and after it's done, you will see there are different squares. Okay, then we do the same thing. We put the top two corners, fold it into the focal point here. All right, do the same with the other one. And the other side. And okay. Now up to here, it's same thing as the first one, but then the next step, it, it's gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna fold this in half, okay? This top part in half, okay? See that? Fold this top part in half. Then we're gonna close it up. Um, close it up on both sides like this, okay? See that? All right, make sure it's nicely folded. Then we're gonna choose this focal point, okay? We're gonna take this side up, see? And align it, aligning up with this focal point. 
see this um, full line here, we're gonna line it up and then we're gonna push it down. It's gonna form a triangle full line in here. Do the same thing with the other one. Okay, this, see this full line? We're gonna take this and match, follow and follow this full line here. Okay, along the way, we're gonna push down the uh, triangle full line here. See that? Okay. After that, it's done. We're gonna push the whole entire thing. It's like a bow shape, like a, a boat shape. And then we're gonna do it like this, okay? See this? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna take this side, uh, line up to this full line, just like before we did, okay? Form a triangle, form a triangle shape in here. Triangle full line. Do the same thing in here. Take this, follow to this side. There we go. Right. Right here. All right. Then you make sure that um, fold this together a little bit to form a nice and solid full line. And same thing with the angle that, that popped out. Fold these two angles together. Make sure it form a very nice full line here. Then we take this part. We take the bottom. See this pocket here? This pocket. We take the bottom here and we put these inside the pocket. Okay. Okay, this little hands, little little connector inside the pocket. Okay. Inside the pocket, inside this pocket as well. There we go. Then we turn around. We put the top of the lids cover the bottom. The lid cover the bottom. Yeah. There we go, boys and girls. That's our two-piece uh, box. And, wow, isn't that nice and easy? I hope everybody will try to make that. Well, this craft reminds us that um, sometimes we need to put our hands in the box and we don't know what we're gonna get, but we need to trust the Lord. So this is the box challenge this week and I hope this craft will remind you of that and next week we'll see you next time. Alright, see you, bye bye! Hi boys and girls, this is Teacher Melody. Let's do our closing prayers together, okay? Dear Lord, as we bow our head together, we want to thank you for giving us life so that we can spread of your gospel and I thank you that we can come to you every week to learn of your words, to know about you, and to grow in you. And Lord, we know that we need to spread your gospel and that um, we need to be humble and we need to have good faith when we speak of your words to others. But Lord, sometimes we're afraid. We, we, we're, we don't know what to say. We don't know how to say it right. But Lord, we know that you are with us and that um, your Holy Spirit will be with us when we spread your gospel. And that, Lord, give us um, courage and give us good faith when we speak of your word so that your, your name will be glorified, Lord. And that um, people will be, re will be repentant of their sin and that they will be your children. And Lord, help us so that we will um, not be afraid. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, boys and girls, have a nice weekend. Why don't you open this box? 
to receive your reward. Okay.